Okay, so if everybody, please close your eyes and take a nice big deep breath. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will heal as I let him teach me to heal. Amen. Okay, so we have been working on the miracle principles, which are found at the very beginning of the text. So if you want to turn to that, we're going to be working on a miracle number 25. I know. <laughs> I hear you, Bert. I hear you. <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah. All right. So miracle number 25. And we actually started working on this miracle last week, but there's a little more juice in it I wanted to squeeze. So I will reread the, the particular miracle. And its miracles are a part of an interlocking chain of forgiveness, which when completed is the atonement. Atonement works all the time and in all dimensions of time. And there's a kind of a sweet little miracle, I think. Uh, so miracles are a part of an intertwining chain of forgiveness. And I'll just stop there. So the, the course describes the idea of a holy instant. And a holy instant is basically a moment where you choose to connect with love instead of what we normally connect with, which is some form of guilt, sin, and fear, attack, whatever. And every time we have that choice, that little willingness, literally something is happening, as it says in the second sentence, atonement works all the time in all dimensions of time. So even though we may ask for help and you know we're so used to turning on the TV, we push a button and poof, the, button, the TV's on, with miracles, it doesn't always happen quite as quickly as we'd like it to in the way we think it should happen, which are two real serious problems. Because a lot of times when we ask for a miracle, we have already decided what that miracle is supposed to look like. And this course is trying to help us understand when you're in charge, when you think you know the answer, when you even think you know the question, for that matter, you're highly likely in your ego, and you haven't moved aside to allow the Holy Spirit to fill in the space, which will bring us to the real healing or real forgiveness. And literally, the word forgiveness in the Course is extremely different than most definitions of forgiveness, because usually in the, in the Bible or in the physical definition of forgiveness, it's usually, you know, Bert did something wrong to me and I'm going to be this holy Course of Miracles student and I'm going to forgive him. But really what the word forgiveness in the Course means is that I believe the illusion is real and forgiveness is actually inviting the understanding that the illusion is not real. And there's a numerous places throughout the course where Jesus speaks of the idea of this course takes you to what is true and what is true has nothing to do with the illusion. And, and having said that, we're all caught in the illusion and we believe the illusion is our home and we believe this is my life and, and whatnot. And in the last week or two, we, we read in one of the miracle principles, this idea of when I am living in the belief of the illusion, I close the door to the awareness or possibility of what the miracle or truth really is. So it's like we're in one world or the other. And our ultimate goal is to spend more time choosing to connect with what is true. And then the answer comes through you, not of you, which is, again, very important because it's not the, the answer is coming from something beyond you. Your 
your body, I guess you could say, may receive it for lack of a better way to put it, but it's not coming from Marianne. It's coming from the thought system of choosing for love instead of for the ego. And um, I'll just go through a couple lines that I read last week that aren't, you know, actually in the book here. So the Holy Spirit really is the expression of the atonement principle. And for most of us, we know that when we chose the separation, the course calls that the ego. The answer came you that nothing happened, and it's called the Holy Spirit. So when he says the Holy Spirit is the connecting link between ourselves and God, which thereby undoes the separation, correcting the air. And the air ultimately really has nothing to do with the physical. It has to do with the fact that we chose for the ego. So the healing of that is to choose for the Holy Spirit, which then blocks this out and allows this to flow through. And again, you're choosing this or this. Nowhere do the two of them meet in any form, in any way. It's either you're aligned with the ego or aligned with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the, the, I guess you could say the goal is to spend more time here, which will then begin, begin to give you the reflection of that truth. And you're not choosing the particular. No, you're, you're not. Choosing, no. Okay, today I'll go to church, today I'll do yeah. this, today right. I'll do that. You're just weighing the choices really between the, the spiritual intent you have or the acting of the Holy Spirit. Correct. So it's all very invisible. There's no. Yeah, um, very invisible. That's a good way to put you wear or the little Buddha <laughs> you have on your car. It's all right. about what you're choosing in terms of mating, right. waiting for that helpful expression to come through. And right. the minute you say, God, I don't know, help me, you've entered into that decision. Mm -hmm. And that's the only decision we ever have to make. Right. You have to stop and be oh, well, you really want to calm yourself. You also, it's very important as well to let go of, okay, you could say this, the ego is about a story, okay? And we got bazillions of stories. Each one of us have our own individual closet full of them that relate to me personally, but the bottom line is they're all the same. So in order to come over here, it's, it's, it requires that I go, wait, I don't know, help. So a calming, you know, I think you're going to start with this because obviously, you know, the only way I'm going to know I have an issue that I'm not at peace is something in the world triggers me. So we start with that and then we recognize, oh, that's a result of choosing for the ego. And I've learned from the course that's probably not to my advantage any longer. And when you can calm down and say, okay, Holy Spirit, I don't know anything. You show me the answer. That's when that transition happens. But literally every single time you have that little willingness and you make that choice to shift over to you know, the decision maker or you're just observing the insanity of the play that's taking place within the illusion, every time you do that, something is happening. And that second line again says atonement works all the time and in all dimensions of time. Doesn't necessarily mean something's going to change over here in a moment's time. This is really about getting your mind from here to here. That's the goal. And as you spend more time here, the reflection of love will begin to occur versus when you're aligned here, the projection of guilt, sin, and fear is an ongoing storyline. And we're always doing this unless we, and you know, I like to think of these two, two as uh, record players, the old fashioned kind. And if you have the needle on this one, it's going to go around in the grooves. When you pick up the needle and you put it over here, you're saying, I don't know the answer. And that's a good thing because the answer doesn't have anything that I would know how to solve it anyways. Uh, so I pick up that needle and put it over here and go, okay, Holy Spirit, run the show because I don't know. Okay, So it uh, becomes um, a relinquishment of my thinking I know anything. Okay, and he goes on to say, each of us must complete the atonement for ourselves. And that is ultimately the 
uh, that's really the only responsibility of ourselves is to accept the atonement for ourselves and be very aware at, <laughs> we're all going to do this, so I'm not picking on anybody because yeah, we just do. Most of the time when we have an issue, it's this, right? <laughs> They did, she did, why don't they? I, I, you know, why is it raining outside? Whatever it is. Or did something happen? Like, or something sorry, happened. Everything happened to us. Yes. Or that's yes. our experience of it through our body. Right. But it's always outside. And this is a course of yes, start with the outside because that's where the trigger occurred. And be aware that the guilt, sin, and fear is in our mind. We projected it into the world, and now we've spent most of our lives playing the part of an innocent victim, pointing the finger at something or someone outside, including my own physical body as well. Don't forget that one. Um, but what the Course is asking us to do is take that setup that the ego did, and now when you're triggered, realize, oh, I must have chosen for the ego because I'm not at peace. Okay, Holy Spirit, I open my arms to you, but I have to drop my story for that to open up so that you can find him. Also, we've chosen for the ego because we're in this body. Because we well, the body throws out the ego. So that, that is that was a choice that it didn't seem like we made, but that that was um, correct. Emotionally, when you lay it down to what the words say, it becomes you. It becomes clear that that's true. You feel that. Feeling that you have made it, you have made it, right. and you just need to make it different. Right, but the but the trick of the ego has been, okay. So if I, you know, attack my brother, let's say, and whether it's verbally, if it's just in my mind, or if I take out a gun or knife, it doesn't matter which form it is. If I attack my brother, what normally happens then, even though I'm happy that I won the game, that particular um, inning or whatever you want to call it. Um, round one, yes. The deal is, then I feel guilty because I'm trying to be a loving, nice person. So all that does is recycle this side, okay? So what we're being asked to do is to spend more time up here observing the character called Marianne in relationship to what goes on in the world and smile at it. Don't judge it. Don't attack it. Just become aware. Oh, if I align with the ego, you know, this, this, the op, this is going to happen. I don't know if you can read that from back there, but it's, the words are hate, emptiness, illusion, uncertainty, death, dread, time, guilt, chaos, fear, intense pain, and special love, which is a love where it's an arrangement, not a love of truly aligning with love and loving unconditionally. So if I'm here observing me and my relationship with the world and I become aware, of course, if I've chosen for the ego, that's what it's going to look like. And I, and I smile at it and go, well, duh, what would you expect if I chose for my ego? And when you're, you know, can come to the wherewithal of calming that all down. And then if you want to ask for help, then you're, you know, automatically popping into this this realm. But even the just looking at it without judgment or condemnation is a huge direction in that way. All right. So if anybody wants to, we're just going to read a little tiny part in text. Um, I didn't even write the name down. Let me see. I usually do, but I didn't. Text V. Text to... All right, so it would be, all right, huh, it's not the right one. All right, I'll just read it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that means, in other words, that means when we accept the responsibility of the atonement for ourselves, that we must accept the denial of the reality of separation and the unreality of guilt in the specific relationship and situation that we confront. This is our classroom. I will reread that. That's very, um, <laughs> very course-like language. <laughs> All right. So that means we must accept the denial of the reality of separation. So it's, I'm going to deny that I have chosen for 
the separation, which is the unreality of guilt in a specific relationship. So what appears to be happening with my relationship here has to be denied as well. If this isn't real, this isn't real, which sounds really easy on paper, but is a little bit harder to practice in our daily life experiences because we've been we chose to be programmed to kill or be killed. So our natural internal response when somebody comes my way is to do this, or I do this one a lot of times too. But when you can come to the place of stopping that and say, wait, I want to know what the Holy Spirit has in charge or in line for me, then there's only one person doing this, okay? Now, this person, you know, when we talked earlier of the push button response, mm -hmm. you know, you had a contract with them. This is what we do. I pick on you, you pick on me. I pick on you, you pick on me. So when one of us stops that, this one's going to try to do this because you had a contract. What do you mean changing your contract? And that person will keep pushing until maybe they're ready to embrace that or they'll go find somebody else to to do that game with because this game isn't working with you any longer. Um, so, but the deal is whoever's the most um, healed or potentially healed in any given moment has the opportunity to make that change. If you're waiting for this one to make that change and they don't have any spiritual backing, this highly unlikely they're going to be the first one that makes that choice. Okay. So it really is, an, it's an internal job. It's a job of what do I want? Do I want to attack my brother more or do I want to know who I am as love more? And that's always, you know, the, the two choices. And having said that, you know, just having that knowledge does not mean that this is going to be well, let's just dance through through life i know about this because what happens is we have invested all of our eggs i guess you could say in the ego since the big bang so this has been running the show it's very you know the grooves on that record player are very deep and they're very automatic. And I just respond oftentimes without even thinking, you know, how many times somebody yells at you, you know, you might wake up in the morning, read a beautiful lesson and okay, I'm just going to glide through life today. And somebody looks at you and bam, you're gone because this is so deeply seated of a groove. So it may take some time for you to practice to get to the point where this becomes your automatic response. But the deal is if you do that, be gentle with yourself, be loving with yourself. And again, as I said before, if you can be here and observe yourself and just simply recognize, oh, of course, that's how an ego would respond. Oh, well, next time. So to she, she, clarify yeah. for myself uh -huh. and physics with this, if I am looking with the Holy Spirit at whatever is in front of me, mm -hmm. I am going to receive that as love. Or I if mean I, ultimately, yes. If you're if you're really there, yes, correct. Yes. Like someone is either giving love or asking for correct. love. Correct. And that could be the weather. It doesn't have to Absolutely. be absolutely correct. <laughs> and that doesn't mean informed though. It doesn't mean in form. Okay, well, I'm, I want to make sure everybody understands. Right, right, right. Because, you know, I always bring it back to Jesus dying on the cross from the perspective of the course. You know, they were doing some pretty nasty things to him. You know, you don't, you don't, oh, no, he's not, that's not happening to him. All those things physically were happening to him, but he was completely aligned with this part of his mind. So he knew what he was, which was love. So he saw everyone in that circumstances through the lens of love or a call for love. And his only response then was love. Yeah. And, you know, we're all wannabes, yeah. <laughs> you know? but that's a start in the direction we need to go. But, but it helps to have that as an intent. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah.
Yeah, because, well, if I don't have that in intent or I don't have the, you know, if I'm trying to climb a mountain, if I don't have the mountain in front of me and I'm looking up, then I'm just yeah, wavering I'm around. Here, right, exactly. Yeah, and again, if I want to climb that mountain and make it to the top, I have to keep taking the steps in, you know, if you're a mountain climber, you stumble sometime and you go backwards sometimes and then you have to, you know, patch your knee because it's bleeding and then you pick yourself up and you walk some more. And many people, you know, finally go, heck with this, I don't want to do this. But if we really stay the course, eventually we'll make it to the top. But it, it requires a lot of commitment. And the stick in your the stick in your own purpose, like in your mm -hmm. own sure. group, because climbing the mountain is for the mountain climber, it's not necessarily for me, but it's true. You know, right. to you wherever you are. Group and you're taking one step at a time. And what's happened for me in this course is that I stopped looking at myself thinking, why did I do that? What yes. right. did I instead I can see clearly each step. And I feel that the onus of having it, having on my mind being my heart, gone. The onus is gone because it's not really my, Correct. it's not really, I'm not the only one doing this. And I'm not, it's not really my, I don't do have to do the whole world. I don't have to save the whole world. <laughs> nope. I just have to get to my, and my opinion of myself and how I'm moving has all become a, a much um, yes. clearer. Mm -hmm. After three or five or six years, um, it doesn't matter that I was a klutz that long ago. It just matters that I understand how to, how to ask for help and how to get help and how to appreciate what's coming to me. Well, and, it doesn't and, matter about the years or the... No, no. And, you know, I'm going to use your example because I think it's, it's a helpful example. In this belief... Then it all comes about me. You know, I'm a klutz. I'm stupid. I, I didn't do that right. I, I, you know, I shouldn't have yelled at that person. I blah, blah, blah. You know, all the ways of which we are second guessing the choices that we've made. And that's one big, huge, gigantic um, mirrors and smoke. The problem isn't that. The problem is that we made the choice for the ego. We're always trying to fix it this way. And the answer is, I chose for separation and the result is going to be some form of something's wrong. I'm an innocent victim, you name it. And, and it's my fault. But it's not the individual's fault. It's the choice's fault. Mm -hmm. And we all collectively made that choice when we were at one and we chose for the ego because... We wanted to be in charge. We wanted to be God. We wanted to be the one that, here we go. God was on the throne. He gave us everything that was his. You know, he was the father. We were the son. He gave us love, peace, joy, connection, oneness, innocence, and the same. We said, well, darn, he didn't let me be God. He didn't let me be in charge. I want to be in charge. So we kicked him off the throne, we hopped on the throne, and now there's a me and a God, and now God's my enemy because I'm afraid of him. We're now separated, and instead of the love, joy, peace, connection, and oneness, we get the results of guilt, sin, fear, separation, projection, and we're different. And all the other things are still there. It's like a coin. You flip it on the coin, you know, coin on the floor, it might say heads. We know tails under there but I have no access to it. And the only way I can have access to the results from God is to give up the story of the ego and say, I don't know, help. And then his answer will come to us, okay? It helps to make Jesus your best friend. That would be a very a good friend. thing, yes. Yeah. Really? Yep. Because then yep. sometimes you're just going like this with the elbow. Yep. The elbow. Well, okay. it's so true. And in, you know, in my experience, and I'm guessing most people have this as well, when we start out, it, it's like walking into a room full of, of um, fog, okay? Like there, you can't see anything, you can't see anyway, can you see your hand in front of your face? And you might want to call that the guilt that we harbor as we start this journey. But as I said earlier, every single time you ask for help, a little of that fog is clearing up. So halfway through your journey, it's not quite as intense. 
Now, eventually it will be completely cleared out, but right now I'm starting to see images and I don't trip as much because I can, I can see a little more clearly. And that's really the fog or the guilt being lifted. So it's not so heavy on us and our ability to walk through it becomes a little bit more gentle, I guess you could say. And Bert, you had something a while ago. I don't know if you still do. You know, I, I think this whole thing boils down to um, a function of speed. And, you know, we just spent 15 minutes explaining what occurs in a nanosecond. Absolutely. Less than a nanosecond. And, and, and so I, I, I need to overly simplify it so that I can practice better <laughs> when I'm communicating with myself, which makes me a better communicator. My relationship with myself changes my relationship mm -hmm. with others. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of um, confusion revolving around the miracle and the atonement. So in oversimplified terms, what I understand or what I think that I've learned from the court is the miracle is simply a shift in perception. Yes, from the ego to help me. Okay, boom. And that's, yeah. I can do that in a nanosecond. Beautiful. The, yeah. the, I don't do it. Let's yeah, 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 it, you stop. I, okay. That shift, I just want to clarify. Right. Exactly. That shift can occur for me in a nanosecond. It can. All right. right. Now, I used to think that the atonement and the miracle were the same thing. But so I'm asking for clarity. The miracle is the shift which leads me to the atonement, which is the Holy Spirit's plan of correction to undo the ego Correct. and heal the belief in separation. Right. But and and again, when you're talking about the nanosecond, that shift and the rest of that just happens. So it's not like they're it, you know, we chop it down in steps, but it really is as soon as I make that shift, all of this has taken place already. So yes, what you just read was right. So when I when it when the shift occurs via the miracle, which is this shift in perception, the atonement automatically occurs. Correct. I, I, right. Now yeah. I'm in instead of the ego. Mm -hmm. I am with the Holy Spirit. Correct. And if we look at it from this chart, in that moment, you're or you're up here, yeah. out of time and space, and you don't really have a body. Isn't that special? Okay. And when you come back down, all this time has been collapsed that you would have had to live through had you not been there. So that, you know, the course in a number of places talks about the idea of this course actually saves time. And the reason it saves time is because you're actually out of time when you ask for help. Okay, so then my experience of this is that, you know, feel felt fun. Um, right. When, when I <clears throat> accept the atonement, mm -hmm. I find myself not taking responsibility for the other person's stuff. Oh, man, because it's none of your business. Okay. <laughs> right. You right. Well, that's well, actually that's right. Her, that uh, Bert, when, when you do that, <laughs> yes. you become that other person. That person isn't a separate anymore. That this is duality. This is oneness. Yeah. And, and again, Marianne doesn't have to figure out oh, what's going to take place here. I get this out of the way to allow that to happen. You let the nanoseconds go. Oh, yeah. No, no, no yeah. more nanoseconds. It's, it's like ready. I think I'm a drop of water, but whoops, all of a sudden I'm the ocean. Correct. Yes. Correct. But when I see this other person, that, mm -hmm. that, this is when I get to that space, right. then I see the other person suffer. Isn't and that There's isn't a certain that amount of sadness in that mm -hmm. because I can't Fix it for them. Right, right, right. Well, but I think if we look at that through the lens of in the past, I would attack them because they were attacking me. Right. 
And now you're stepping back a little. Eventually, you will actually get to the point where you know none of this is real and they're not really suffering. But that's another step or two down the road. What can, yeah. What you can start to see is that they are believing a story. That they're yeah, right, just like you were. Good and point. what you're feeling at this point is compassion. Yeah, because you have been there. Because you, oh, yeah. yeah, you, you recognize that. it. And, oh, yeah, okay. right. Yeah. And and be aware, just like we're climbing the mountain, you know, every step takes you closer, but every step is not there yet. And and so, you know, as we open to this understanding more and more, we'll and, and in a way the 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 sorrow for your friend is the ego sneak, sneaking back in there and saying, Oh, and I'm identifying with my body at that point, because I would not experience the suffering they're suffering if I wasn't in my body. And again, that's why Jesus could die on the cross from the perspective of the Course and not be affected by it, because he was no longer 100% attached to his body. But this is a process of stepping, you know, every step takes us closer to that, and every step um, diminishes the, uh, the solidness and the connectedness of the, of the world. But think about it, we really, <laughs> for the average person, none of us can just jump into that. That's just way too much, okay? So though I know I, I speak for myself, you know, you get very impatient. I've been working on this course, and that kind of thing. But when I look back now, I can see that it just such a very gradual process because I, I wasn't ready for it to open it any further at that time. And you can look back and go, wow, look at all those steps that took me to now. It's pretty powerful. We get so busy going to the decision maker that you don't have time to think about what a clutch has been all the way up. There. Isn't that refreshing? <laughs> you just get busy. I mean, with, okay, this isn't working. I don't like the way this feels. Mm -hmm. My stomach hurts. Whatever it is, you go, Jesus, help me. What am I doing? You yep. take two breaths. And you're in a different place, whether you want to be or not. You have made a decision to yeah. not suffer, to not be upset, right. and you don't want to. It, it's going to come back in waves about your parents who die or whatever's happening. It's going to come back in waves, but that wave is not going to be anything that your sailboat can't get over. Right, and mm -hmm. along that way, sometimes you'll go for couple weeks, couple months, and everything's pretty calm, and then bam, another one will come, and it'll just you know. Psh, back in there but slowly they just don't yank you as hard and they you just don't stay there as long and the remembrance of oh you know i could have had a v8 i could have asked the holy spirit comes to play more and more and more as we go through the process and it's the only thing that works because, well yes you know you, you um helene and i were talking today about eating some different food and she said you know i went and got this food i really like it but I, it just didn't didn't taste like it taste the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. I was eating this blueberry lemon muffin, my favorite in the whole world, but I'm eating it. I'm eating it. I think this is like I'm going to have this and go to bed and everything will be fine. Eating it going, this doesn't taste really that much different from cardboard right now. Mm -hmm. What is going on? But I feel like the Holy Spirit is scraping away the crap that my body wants to hang on to instead mm -hmm. of, you know, whatever. Yep. And it's just gently scraping it away and, and, and giving me the freedom to say, I don't want that. I have to carry that around anymore. I don't have to make those blueberry muffins to be happy or, you know, right. whatever. It's just been very interesting to have that kind of, mm -hmm. a, you know, a sideways kind of experience about the body yeah. that it's, you know, if I let it go, it'll diminish. Right. And the beautiful thing about that is if you would have said, okay, I love my blueberry lemon paint, whatever right. muffins they were, and I'm never going to eat them again because, you know, that would make me a bad person or, or whatever you add to exactly. it versus exactly. all of a sudden it just doesn't have the appeal that it had before. Yeah, totally different. No sacrifice. sacrifice. Right, right. But there's no Don't sacrifice. Because she can eat the blueberries. Or not Absolutely. Eat the yes. Yes. It doesn't yes. make a damn bit of difference. Right. But she has no investment. Right. Right. I mean, I, I, I like them. But I, it's well, not I like it not. was before. It's, it's up to you to determine if you've got any investment or not any investment. I thought I liked them the most. And then I went to eat one and it wasn't, it just didn't taste right. And I thought, well, not, I wasn't mad at it. I just said, well, this isn't really what. This isn't really what I want. 
And then, then it throws you back into reading. Well, what the hell do you want? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't there's know. that too. Well, and the then, truth is, you don't know what you want. Right. You say, I don't know, but I don't want this. And you know that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, this the, the, the course is very adamant about mm -hmm. this is not a course on sacrifice. We we all know many spiritualities out there. It's about I'm not going to eat this. Or I'm not going to do this. And then I'll be a good person. This is about when you really want this more than this, you choose this. And that's freely the choice you want. And it has nothing to do with sacrifice. And, you know, and we're not necessarily there yet. So you start with where you are and keep working with it. And eventually the day will come where something you thought you loved, just not a big deal anymore. And, it, and you could eat it or not eat it, but it's not that grasping kind of experience that it was before. Yeah. Did you have something, Bert? <laughs> I guess I'm just a little bit stuck on the sadness. I'm, oh, okay. Um, All right. You know, when in that moment, when I real when I see this person's behavior and my fundamental belief is basically until we become a little bit more light enlightened, we have no other choice other than to do unto other people what was done unto us. And there was a moment in my life when I woke up, there was an incident and I said, I don't want to be that person anymore. Mm -hmm. Um and there's been a significant shift. Right. Um and getting away from last week, I think I'm doing better than I gave myself credit. But then I, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> then, I become, then I become sad when I see this person suffer because I see what was done onto them and probably what was done onto them. Well, yes, and what has been done onto you well, in one form or another. Yeah. And that's where the real suffering is coming from is our um, continued attachment to this body and you can't force that to go away until it's ready to go away and just acknowledge okay now I'm suffering because my friend is suffering okay holy and bring that back to the holy spirit show me that there is no such thing as suffering remember suffering is in this dictionary suffering does not in this dictionary now, in that moment, you could be here and you you open the door for your brother to be here too, but she may have some residue over here and she's not ready to step over here completely, but you brought her over here by your choice. And, you know, when it says accepting the atonement for myself, that's really what it means. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, what am I seeing? When I see them suffer, it wakes up the suffering in me. It wakes up the suffering that needs to be healed. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and again, remember the guilt, sin, and fear for the choice of the egos in our mind. And we, we spoke in, a couple of weeks ago of the idea of we projected it out into the world. But much like an architect, they still have the blueprint in their mind that didn't go away. Okay, so now I play the part of an innocent victim, but all the gunk that's still harbored in my subconscious is sitting there fully alive and well. And I blame it on them, but all they're really doing is triggering the fact that I still have some of the residue of that in my mind. And again, use that as an opportunity to ask for help too. Okay. All right, so I'm going to read that line again because I think it's so profound. That means we must accept the denial of the reality of separation. So we believe the separation is real. We're being asked to deny. And when it, I, I always hesitate when he says denial because it sounds like I'm denying it. What it means is I realize I believe in the separation. Okay, Holy Spirit, help me to know what you see instead of what I see. Okay, so that means we must accept the denial of the reality of the separation and the unreality of the guilt in the specific relationship and situation that we confront. So the problem isn't here. In the workbook lesson, is it seven? I, keep, I got it mixed up with five. Um, I'm never upset. Five. Five. Okay. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I think I'm upset because you did or he did or she sad or he sad or whatever. I'm upset because this is the choice that is engaged. So the answer is the recognition that it's not this, it's this. And I can now say, okay, Holy Spirit, show me what life is without suffering. I don't know what that means. 
if you try to help someone out of that state mm -hmm. of it, feeling like you are the person so that you know you can do something, you, you quickly realize that you mm -hmm. you cannot do it. Right. I mean that that's probably the, the thing that you know throughout my life I tried to do things and I I mm -hmm. fail at trying to help somebody. Right. Because I can't do that. It no. doesn't work. No, nope. and at the same time, if you find yourself doing something, first of all, ask the Holy Spirit first, because if you do that, then whatever you say or do will be coming from the healed part instead of the ego part. And just know this is where I am right now. So you smile and go through the process of doing what you do. And as he says here in um this section I'm reading, this is our classroom, is to catch yourself, become aware, oh, there I go again, or, oh my gosh, now I'm feeling her sadness and pain instead of my sadness and pain, okay? And that, again, is the opportunity to become aware, I, I got triggered again. The form of which triggering occurs makes no difference. It comes in so many bazillions of delightful little, you know, with frosting and all kinds of sprinkles on top. That's a reminder. Okay, wait, I must not be aligned with truth. I must be stuck over here again. I want to know what his response is. The carpet of time is made up of thousands and millions of little threads. And each thread represents the individual life we call our own. And I remember once, Ken, if you can think of this whole page as everything, he put on a whole bunch of little dots. And you could think of each one of those dots is a lifetime. So Marianne picks this little lifetime. She draws a fence around her. And now I am me. I'm special. I'm different from everything and everyone else. But as we begin to ask for healing, we're actually, and I, I don't know if you can see it real well, I'm erasing part of my fence. Okay, every time I ask for help, I'm literally erasing part of my fence. And eventually, I will not only erase the fence, I will eventually erase my identity because I am not that. I am the whole. And again, I'm not ready to be the whole yet. <laughs> and I kind of like my fence still, okay? And we just have to respect that that's where I am right now. It's not good or bad. It's not, it doesn't make me a sinner or anything like that. It simply is helping me to become aware. Oh, if I'm that identified with this character, that's where I am right now. You know, I remember when my daughter was little, she had this favorite blanket. And one time my mother-in-law was babysitting and it was this big heavy quilt thing. And so she took it out of the bed and, and or the crib and hung it next to her. Well, my daughter just stood there and cried for hours because her blankie wasn't with her. But my mother-in-law thought it was too warm. She wouldn't need it. But that, you know, if I need a blankie, if I need that security right now, I need it right now. And But there's never a time that you can't add, okay, Holy Spirit, I need my blankie now. But help me to open the door so I can relinquish my blanket. Okay. This is a very gentle process. Anything that gets added to this by my ego, which we add a lot to very often is going to cause me some form of suffering. And it's not really what the course is offering us. All right. So each of us must undo the beliefs that go into each thread. So if I believe I am that little dot on the screen and then I have my little fence around me, that's what I believe right now. And so I start with the, where I am. And again, every time I ask for healing, I'm going to erase a little bit of the solidity of my investment in that thing, that dot that I call me. And you know, keep remembering from the day you took your first breath, in this lifetime, you thought this is what it was all about. And of course, we're obviously quite identified with that. But again, every time you ask, you are undoing the solidness of that and inviting the connection with what is true. So somebody else's, somebody else's fence 
that you see as an obstacle is really your thing. Yeah, always, that's always. What, to compare that then to how you let go of your defense is a little piece by piece. That, Correct. Um, and you don't know how to do it. No, no. I mean, I think that's probably, for me, one of the biggest things is that you're a thinking uh, animal. I mean, Tommy earlier really thinking this and thinking that, but um, you can't think your way out of that fence. No. Like you're sitting, you're sitting there with the sadness about, well, no. I have my own issues. Yeah. Put that with someone. And you're sitting there thinking, you know, how, you know, why are they, why did this happen? Why are they yeah. like this? Why can't, you know, why can't, why can't? Yeah. And I think, um, the healing moment is where you say, I can't do it. That's correct. And that's something in our culture we're not allowed to say. We I can do it. I can I can yep. learn how to use the potty. That's in my my realm of children. So <laughs> you know, yes, I can. That you can do that. Okay. Yes. You know, and, and basically this is a whole other thing where you 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 say, I, I can't I can't manage the universe. That's I correct. can only Ask and if when I, and the minute I stop trying to manage other people's pain or sorrow, and I think that was the, the catch with Jesus on the cross when I was growing up was you were taken to these fourteen or twelve stations of the cross every um, every time every Good Friday, and you know you're a child and you're thinking, oh look at what I did, look at this. There's twelve sure. different things, but you don't. It's not for you to manage. You mm -hmm. you weren't. You're not the person who. You're not the only person doing this. You're just. You can only have, and that's your access to um, to the infinite. That's your access where you yep. say, I don't know, what, yes. who, why am I here? What is this for? And then you just slowly get an answer that doesn't involve that kind of confidence. Like, now what do I do? Now what's wrong? Now what, what, why don't you do this? Take out the trash. You know, whatever, all those things going on in your head. Yep. And so that's been an interesting part of it is that you can eat, you know, to give up your hold on what's supposed to happen and who you think you are is, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, the biggest part of events. Yeah. And remember, all the questioning, all the re making resolves of how it's going to work better, all are coming from here. The answer doesn't lie here. The answer lies from relinquishing this. Yeah, you, you can't think your way out of it. Because you can't think your way out of the fence because thinking is the fence. Right, yes. And I recently um, became aware of a line in the course that says, all questioning is propaganda for the ego, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> and, you know, that doesn't mean we're not going to continue to question. We probably will. But that's just a game that says, okay, if I can figure it out one more way, I'm, I'm a, and, and the whole time it's a trap because we're stuck over here instead of help. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's very helpful and, and it, it's becoming more and more apparent for me um, that the ego is a problem maker. That's yeah. all it is. It, it, it wants to present itself as a problem solver, right, but, it's, but really... it's not a problem solver. And, and, and it's never the problem that I think it is anyway. Right. So, you know, it's, it's always coming to, I don't know. And what I, and, and it's, I don't know anything. Yes. Isn't it's that not wonderful? just, I don't know, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know anything. Nope. Nope. And you never will over here. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> I think we've spoken up before about watching the news and all these things are happening and i remember for myself watching the children with their backpacks on television walking across um, where they were walking from for days and days and how to watch that in one state of mind is to really be torture i mean i spent my life with taking care of children watching these kids it's really like a stage of torture to watch this but like we talked again about how, well, you don't have to shut off the news. You're not supposed to go around with your eyes, but you're supposed to be, you know, going in the world. What you're going through. Right. And so it's been interesting for me then to have that start to filter down to those kinds of things where, you know, people on the news are talking constantly about one air, one opinion and the opposite. And they have all the people on the show who are constituents who can give their, and I listen and I listen and I listen and I go, well, 
well, see, that's the problem. You're still talking about it. You know, it'll be over. <laughs> if you could only, if only you could give it all to the Holy Spirit, it would be changed. It would change its shape in your mind. You would stop thinking about it as your problem, how you jump into it, whose responsibility is it. You start yep. to think about how this is the way the world is run, and it's not working. The Holy Spirit doesn't um, make money or make make a lot of money. <laughs> well, but but keep remembering, if if you go into a gym class and you're going to play, let's say football or whatever, or anything that there's a competitive situation, you walk in, you're all friends, and then you count off one, two, one, two, one, two. All the ones wear red, all the uh, twos wear blue, and within that hour or however long the game is, you're mortal enemies. Well. The, we're so established in the game of mortal enemies that we don't realize there is a place where that game isn't doesn't exist. I mean, it doesn't. It's you know, initially it seems like that was can't. How is that possible? Well, there, I agree. Okay, there's no place where you know this bullshit isn't going on all over, where you know everybody's at each other's throats. Yep. And you know, in your own family, when you have, you're the one thinking. Oh, I'm going to take the higher ground. I'm the peaceful one, and they're they're arguing, and then they ask me, and I say, you know, I don't say much. They go, and they're like, you know, you have to have an opinion. What do you mean you don't like? And she just doesn't care about it. like it. Just you know, it's just so interesting. Like you're pulled into this is the fabric of the world. Is everything is going to get you, and I, if you don't shape up and have a good barricade, a good fence up, you're you know you're not going to make it. And that's a you it's know. True. It's, it's a scary place. Or it's, it's also, you do feel foolish. You feel like, well, what do I know? <clears throat> then I come to the class and I, my system works as long as I get out of the way and don't think mm -hmm. that I'm the great one be quiet and sweet. Right. And right. Else is right. Doing, right. So it's mm -hmm. been, you know, that's the journey. It's just Yes, um, because if you do the I'm holier than thou and you don't bring your brother over here, you're not really over here. Right. It's, it's a, you're one here. Over here, you're dual. Right. But if I can't bring my brother, I'm not going over here you myself. Don't think it's dualistic until you ask the Holy yes. Spirit, yep. how do I what is this? What is this about? Show me who I am in this moment. And the moments come hard and fast, you know. Well, I guess with all those dogs in my life lately. But um I <laughs> that's my job. That's what I have to, you know, and everyone else's problems or however they perceive it, that's Absolutely. their most important job. Yep. All right, so when every last child of God completes his or her plan, the overall plan of atonement is complete. So understand that when this um, choice was made initially, there was one son. We then splintered off into bazillions of little pieces, but each one of the bazillions of little pieces has this pattern in their mind. So when all of us go back to our right mind, then the the atonement is complete. There won't be need for confusion or conflict or duality. Unlike the concept of atonement through sacrifice, the Course specifically discusses atonement without sacrifice. When we choose the miracle, we are really choosing to forgive. And the more we do that, the more we are able to extend this forgiveness to other people. Atonement works all the time in all dimensions mm -hmm. of time. It reflects the idea of the hologram. And uh, let's see, it can be understood in terms of another statement, which says that behind each brother, in fact, I'm gonna read this from the book because um, <clears throat> I'd like the wording of it. And this is chapter 27, page, uh, uh, paragraph 10. So it would be page 579 if you want to come along and move along with it. So um, another concept, and this is going to basically parallel this and uh, draw a diagram here. <clears throat> I'll show you the picture after I read it. So we're going to start with paragraph or paragraph 10, line four. 579? Correct. Paragraph four. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 10, line four. Yes. Your brother first among them will be seen, but thousands stand behind him 
and beyond each one of them, there are a thousand more. Each one may seem to have a problem that is different from the rest, yet they are solved together. And their common answer shows the question could not have been separate. So basically, if you think of this as a tire, and this is the hub in the middle, and I'm over here thinking there's a problem over here that I've got to solve and I've got to fix, okay? But when you go to the hub or the center or the healing, literally each one of these starts to heal, whether you are even working or thinking about it or not. So literally every time you go to this, healing is happening on many, many levels that you may not even be aware of. And eventually they'll accumulate to the point where all this will be erased and all that will be left is the love in the middle. Oops, I erased love. Get back here, love. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Okay, so eventually everything will be in the connection with love instead of all the things that we spend our time playing in. Right. So let's see where I want to start from there. Okay, so I'm also forgiving all the other people in my life or other lives who have represented the same problem. All minds are joined, okay? And again, ego, separation, not joined. Aligning with the Holy Spirit, I want to align with my brother and with God. So the atonement corrects and heals all aspects of the same issue, even when you are not aware of it. The atonement refers to the individual level as well as to the collective one. So rather, I think I'm working on one individual special, specific situation, doesn't matter. It's being healed on a much higher level than what we're aware of. All right, we will take about a 10 minute break and come back and play some more. Yeah. <laughs> I heard all these like like rain things about Brian Purdy and I was like okay guys we're gonna get started and yay we made it halfway through the 20 of the 50 miracle presents from principles yay so we're going to, I said, we finished, the, there's 50 principal miracles and we finished 25, so we're halfway there. <laughs> We've been working on them for a few weeks now. Okay, so number 26, miracles represent freedom from fear. Atoning means undoing. The undoing of fear is the essential part of the atonement value of miracles, okay? So we usually think of a miracle as, you know, the idiot's not an idiot anymore or, or whatever it is that we set into play, but the actual healing is you're not as enmeshed in the fear or the guilt that we used to be enmeshed in because every time you go here, recognize this is engaged because I'm suffering or I'm in pain here. That means I need to choose this. And then automatically some of the guilt and some of the fear diminish. <clears throat> so to look with the ego's eyes really is the same as to look with the eyes of fear. You could put a big you know, fear over this side over here because guilt and fear is the result of having this choice. Okay. And I, as Mary Ann, don't walk around thinking, oh, I think I got some guilt, sin, and fear in here, okay? <laughs> it's that underlying, you know, there's something wrong in the world. Um, I'm, 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 I'm wrong. There's something, you know, I've done things that are wrong. 
that all comes with this. If I aligned with this, I would know I'm simply love. But no, no other words would ever come in. So anytime anything other than the experience of love is churning through your veins, I guess you could say, you know you've aligned with this. And we're not asked to become aware of this to make ourselves feel worse than we did before. <clears throat> we're being asked to become aware that's a result of that choice. And if I don't like the results of the choice, I have a way to figure this out to do something different now. And, and actually, Ken would often say the most important part of this course is the recognition that there's another choice. Even if you don't make that choice at this time, the fact that there's another choice available and when I'm ready, it'll be ready for me. Okay, we would never try to attack or hurt others if we were not afraid of them. Bless you. Um, we would never attack or hurt others if we were not afraid of them. Let that one sit for a while. And well, ex exactly. But afraid of them is fear. Well, if you're afraid of them, you're already in fear. <laughs> right. Yes. That's kill or be killed. Oh, absolutely, yeah. kill or be killed. Yes, absolutely. that's the whole setup. Understand that the foundational brick of this thought system is kill or be killed. I'm afraid you're going to kill me. Absolutely, so kill me absolutely. You know, and and, and that's, well, true. And that's not even applying to humans. Right. I mean, anything. Yeah. A bug. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't mean you don't kill bugs. Yeah. But, you know, be right. aware of where you're coming from. Exactly. Get rid of this thing. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is even a virus. Oh, sure. Same thing. Right. Yeah. And we're not even asked to stop doing the action at this point in time. We're being asked to become aware of how overriding it is 24 hours a day in my life experience. Okay. All right. So by choosing the Holy Spirit instead of the ego, we are really choosing love instead of fear. Okay, so again, okay, Holy Spirit, I guess I'm in fear. I don't know how to get out of fear. You tell me there's an answer that I don't know how to do it. I'm willing to go over there. Show me. But I have to be willing to accept that the fear came because that's what we wanted. Okay, we wanted the separation and the effects of that are the results that we got, which is the opposite of truth. And you can't know what you're doing when you're doing it. You're going to be... Um, um, it was just my experience with the dogs. I never had a problem, a problem with dogs, but all of a sudden it became this big deal. And I just, it's like you stepped in it. Like, oh, <laughs> what did I step in here now? And, he, and that's where we're always working downward from. Like we stepped in it for what? So we're going to, now we're going to step out of it. And we're going to ask for help, like what happened or help us to sure. be different. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the biggest thing. I mean, to, like people, I, I always talk about the people in the grocery store, how you get close to the somebody else and you're, excuse me, you know, am I, right. I mean, all this very, this pussyfooting around who's doing the right thing and who's doing the wrong thing in the grocery store. Like, yep. are you, you know, am I in your way? Am I like, you know, you, it just, it just, it just, you just don't know, but you don't know, except that you have this uneasy feeling or this sadness or this, you don't know what you've done until you get something that makes you feel bad, and then you can ask the Holy Spirit. And right. that's the blessing of living. Absolutely. Is we hit, the, hit these spots, and then instead of saying, how stupid, you know, why did I do that? We have to say, help me. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get out of it. And literally, the only way you know that this is going on is that you can be triggered in the world. I mean, we're only only dealing with our projection yeah, absolutely my projection Always. not your projection my projection right. yeah, yeah. Oh, i know Always. you were i was yeah. agreeing with you <laughs> so here's a lovely line atoning means undoing which is another word for correction <clears throat> okay now, you're usually, especially initially, like for the first 40, 50 years of practicing, of course, you think when I atone, the world is going to look better according to Mary Ann. And that's not really the goal. The goal is 
I undo my investment in the ego and I make the correction and choose for the Holy Spirit. What happens after that really is none of my business because it's not coming from me any longer. It's as a result of what the effects of truth are. But, you know, we usually stick our fingers even in the healing part of it, especially initially, which is normal. Basically, when we atone for our sin, we undo the belief in it. Okay, belief in sin, no, not belief in sin. Okay, but I can't, it's so important to know, I can't bring my story and walk over here. I have to let my story go. And when you let your story go, um, you have to get rid of your ego. You have to carve yep. out your ego. <laughs> yeah. No, but gently, right now. Scrape it, yeah, like a pumpkin, right? <laughs> So empty cup. You have to practice having it. Yeah, oh, cup. yeah, you do. And yeah. it's just not, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. No. Like, I'm still worried about it and thinking about it. Yeah. It's yeah. more like you really have to let your inside or just let go. Right. But be aware that if you can come to a place where you are aware that there's a problem, Versus before, when you just reacted to the problem, you're already in the healing process because you couldn't ask of it if you were fully enmeshed in the ego. Okay. Right. Yeah. So and that's you can great. Get better and better. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Mediating your ego. Yeah. Or... Right. The realization that the story is what's causing my suffering. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it's your, the more you practice, the deeper your belief of the story is, is you start to see you start that to that's you know believe it more or have more yeah, faith. I'm listening to the Ron teacher. Right. 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 And actually really yes. that. And you know, observe yourself in a part of your mind thinking, I want to heal. And it's the other part of your mind who just wants to repeat the story over and over and over and find more people to talk to about the story. And you know, be very gentle when you observe yourself doing this and don't judge yourself or attack yourself, but do become aware if I'm repeating the story, I don't really want the answer right that moment. Or, or I should say, I want the story more than I want the answer at that moment. And you know, that's just where we are sometimes. You know, it's like a baby walking across the room who's just learning, well, I want to get to that chair. Well, there's a lot of steps and a lot of falls and a lot of, you know, ripped up knees and blood that happened before I finally develop all the muscles that take me to walking over to the other, to the chair. It's the same thing in this process. Because you, you really, you don't do anything. That's, I mean, that's again, the yep. words that are at this. The words that are in this course. Because you have to be natural and want something. Lost. Yep. You can't, you can't do, you can't do what it takes. So the child walking across the floor is, you know, I've watched it. Right. Uh, because, <clears throat> well, because they don't have all the baggage that we have thinking about what we have to do. Um, mostly they're quite interested, they're very interested, they don't even know what they're doing, they're just taking these steps, and they have no, they don't really are not cooperating with anything except whatever their, you know, their life momentum is, so they're yep. just doing that because that's what they can do, um, whereas we're, we're trying to do something uh, especially helpful or especially mean or something, and we've got all these ideas in our head about what we're doing, and so, or even think of the ego as like an entity or something that's in our way is again, it's, it's not real either. It's Oops. just a, a mind construction. Yes. And and so you can't, you know, you can't decide what you're going to do and then tell the ego to uh, help oh. you because they're not going to not going to feel right. And literally, the ego and anything that comes as a result of the choice for the ego is because I want to be in charge that's running the show versus relinquishing that to allow the Holy Spirit to run the show. And, you know, sometimes, especially initially, we don't even know how much we want to be in charge. 
but we have to look at the results of what's going on to find out how it, you know, deeply seated my desire is to be right. You know, if you're having a conversation and you're convincing that other person you're right and them wrong, you're, you have an investment and it's a really rough investment. And again, observe that, don't judge it, don't attack it, just simply recognize that's where I am on my journey right now. Help me to see this differently. Help me to walk in your shoes instead of mine. Why are Katie continued to be without this? Thought? Absolutely. And I think that I'm more afraid of <clears throat> no, the devil I know you're, is better than the yes. devil that I don't have. Correct. Yeah, correct. And as and as yeah. a child growing into adulthood, the fear had an effect on my metabolism. Sure. And I was at a heightened sense of, and I really believed to be fearful was, right. that was what life was. Absolutely, yes. But, but again, that's the makeup of the programming of the ego. And, and to, well, you know, total peace. What does that give me? But who would I be without <laughs> this thought? Without this fear. You'd be this and you're not ready. To, oops, the wrong chart. The, this one's more effective. This one's much more effective. This is the answer. Well, I, I, what, what good does that do me? But eventually this will be like, yeah, thank you. But right now we're just so involved in the world and the chaos. And, you know, I'm the center of attention. I'm the hero of the dream and all this stuff's going around. I just go from one to the next, whether they're good or bad. And that's fulfilling right now until it's not so much. And then it's not a little bit more and a little bit more. And eventually it's like, oh, where is that piece? It's all I want. But that's not where we are right now. Oh, no, no, no. No, you go with what you feel like you need to go to till it falls away. Again, this is not about don't do it because it's the wrong thing to do. This is about when it's time, it will just, you know, I used to do this. Just one day to just do that. You know, it's you like you ask yourself, how do you feel? It's all the something you else to pick it up. Yourself. Thank you. <laughs> and that's what you're afraid to right. Yeah. It doesn't serve you. Right. And and that's why the course is asking us to be very respectful of where you are in this journey. Be very gentle. Be very kind. You know, I'm terrified of nothingness. I'm terrified of not existing as this character who I believed I've been since the day I was born. How could we erase that in a moment? That's totally absurd. So the thing that it is that we think that we want is the thing that we're we don't really we absolutely want perfect perfect line perfect 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 oh and she wants you to say that again the question is why do you just interpret i'm helping you <laughs> yeah. yes in other words we think we want only the peace of god but the peace of God represents me totally relinquishing everything I know about anything, including me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not all that excited about that. Just actions just now fighting over the peace of God. This is my territory. Absolutely. I represent the peace of God and this is who I am, blah, blah, blah. And the other people are saying the same thing and they're killing each other. Absolutely. So they don't really know. To them, they're talking about something that they... They don't even understand about life. They're talking about they have God's plans, the Holy Lord. Yep. Now, and everybody has God's plans, and then they have this certain territory that only God, their God can speak in. It, you know, and then you, so then that's enough to really you know get you. You're just like, well, where's God in all this? So mm -hmm. they have God, and the other people have God, and you think you have God. Well, where is God? Well, it's not obviously in the body. Right. So we would be happy, right? You would you would think. <laughs> I mean, somebody would, you know, and, and so that everything then everything that happens in the news reinforces to me the teachings of the course about the world because you can't be solved on that. No. And, and if and if I'm watching the news and I'm getting all bent out of shape because something I'm watching on the news or anywhere else for that matter, I need to bring that back to okay, what within me is still playing that game that I don't see, that I want to focus on it being out there and not inside. Well, part of the problem is 
I always think of it as bring it back to the drawing board. Okay, what within me needs to be healed that I'm I'm upset for what that is. And again, with Bert, with the, the friend in the sorrow, same thing. What within me needs to be healed that sees this to be a problem on the outside. And that, you know, that way the, the, the finger comes back to, I'm the one that has to make the atonement for myself. It always ends up back. Always, always, always. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. You know, you, that's what you ask for. If yep. you, I mean, if somebody cuts you off in traffic, you ask for them. If somebody mm -hmm. lets you in in traffic, you ask you don't say, you know, don't go, uh, they gave me a present. <laughs> you, get it. you just have to keep going back to the yep. source and saying, ask them, uh, help me see this through your eyes. And if you don't want to, you don't know because you're still a doubt. Exactly. You know, but especially because, you know, you decided, you made that decision up there. I don't want to, I want to, I want the peace of God now. And you yeah. keep doing that. And when you get the peace of God, it isn't just a blank piece of paper. It's everything. That's what yes. It is. Yes. It's absolutely. You always want is that you have forgotten. Yes. That that's who you are. And that's where you come. Yep. So I'm going to read that line that I read because I love, it's so simple, but so profound. Atoning means undoing, which is another word for correction. So atoning isn't, I get, Miriam gets what she wants and God, thank you for bringing it to me. Atoning is we made a mistake. The mistake was we chose for separation. And the answer is the correction, which is show me who I really am. Basically, when we atone for our sin, we undo the belief in sin and, and guilt and fear and you name it. We do not make it real and then try to undo it. Now, this is a real tricky little slippery little thing that, that just, I think for me, been hard to really grasp, but it's making more and more sense is if I say that's my problem, I've made it real. And then I ask for forgiveness for it. Okay. Well, I've already made it real, so it's done. Now, if I come back to here and I realize I was the one that projected that, and now I want my mind to be healed that sees only love, totally different experience, but slippery, <laughs> very slippery stuff. Okay. And of well, of indeed, issue, yes, it's yes. It's the satisfaction of not not having a war inside. Right. Yes. So exactly. It's not like you don't. Everything doesn't go away, but it just yep. you know gradually you see that no, that was just what I worked. That wasn't working. So yes. Whatever one works best for now. I mean, maybe you know throwing stones or carrying <laughs> throwing bombs. And how many bombs are going to do? I guess that's working for them now, but. When it stops working, then right. but there's there's not enough bombs in the world to solve the war that doesn't that's not in the world. Yeah. I have a question. If, yep. You know, with what you just said, mm -hmm. if I am the author of the story. No, you are the author of the story. Go on. Yeah. So now, <laughs> if, if if I wake up to that and I say I'm going to rewrite the story, this, then you're back in the I, same old thing. You got the pen in hand. I'm still there. Yes, you are. And there's many spiritualities out there that the positive thinking and all, which yes. could be steps that can be very helpful, but that is not what the course is telling us. So if, then the fundamental belief is that I am in control of the story, therefore I am God, which is yeah. separation. And I'm going to fix it, which is not going to solve the problem. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yes. But as the human, within the confines of the human condition, the no thing, the just being okay and the empty space is the most difficult concept. It, it, very much so. so yeah. 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 And it's like, you know, part of our mind goes, yeah, that sounds good. And the other part says, oh, no, that can't possibly be what you're talking about. I better go take charge here again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, exactly. And we do. I want to share this. I woke up this morning and I wrote a little poem. A riddle, and I just want something to think if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning and I look in the mirror 
and I don't even have a face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you don't have a face and you don't have a body either. But what that's not what, yep, yep. what's behind me looking through me. Correct. Yep. 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 And there we have it. And how many want, um, how many of us want to run there right now? The answer is not many of us. But then again, I, the thing that I find so beautiful with the course is Jesus knows we're not ready to run there yet. But he also is saying in this moment, are you willing to ask for something different? And those moments will accumulate. And one moment you will be ready for that. He's got his foot in the door. He's, he's got the foot in the door. Absolutely. In this <laughs> moment, he doesn't even talk about next moment. Yes. All right. So we do not make it real and then try to undo it which of course is the way of the world. It is about denying the reality of sin by changing it into a mistake. The course talks very specifically, this is not a sin. If it was a sin, it could never be forgiven. It was a mistake. We made a mistake and now can be corrected by choosing differently. According to the course, sins are punished by, excuse me, according to the course, sins are punished, mistakes are corrected. And God is not up there with the whip. God only knows you as love because he's only love. All the other stories we have about God of anything other than absolute unconditional love is not the love that the Course is talking about. It's not about denying the world. You're going to continue to walk through the world, you know, do whatever you do in the world, but your mind is going to be more and more focused in who I really am instead of being pulled into the ego world. It's about shifting your interpretation from sin, which is always a projection of your own belief in sin. So the sin is coming because I believe I sin by leaving God behind. He's saying, I love this, nothing happened. This is on the chart every week, but we keep going over here trying to do this. He says, nothing happened. One day that I go, oh, wow, nothing happened. <laughs> so sin is... Um, <clears throat> punishable in the and world, yes. The right. mistake is correctable, absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah, so what is sin? A simple, well, from the perspective oh, of the course, yeah. it is a thought that we took seriously and we've lived from that thought. And, and from the perspective of the ego, we believe we, you know, got rid of God so that we can exist in duality. And we feel like God's going to come back to us and do what we did to him, which was kill him off. So we're afraid of the love of God because we've made, an, um, as the Course calls it, a God of sickness, a God who is just like we are. But the real God is just simply love. And if I believe I'm separate, I believe in guilt, sin, and fear because I believe I'm in opposition to God. So you believe in sin, there really is. Right. You got it, girl. You got it. That's excellent. Yes, very much. A lot of people believe in sin. If you don't, they're like, well, what's that about? It's just interesting how that sin has been like an operating <laughs> principle in my yes. life. Is it is the right? Is it wrong? Is it yep. bad? Is it good? Oh, yeah. And to see that it's just, it's not, it's the thinking that makes it so. Exactly. It's the thinking and the acceptance that that is the reality. And also the thing about God's love has to do with the, with the, um, the story of the, um, you know, the, the, the boy who comes back from the mm, prodigal, prodigal son. Is that that's the, so when God is love and you can get to the bottom of that, mm -hmm. where love lives, where you feel that love, then the sin and stuff really goes out the window. Absolutely. You can't believe in it anymore because it doesn't work in, in a world where you're looking for oneness, where you're looking for God. Exactly. It doesn't work. The only way God works is if God is love. Right. And period. Yeah. And that's a very um well, it, it it seems like a hard concept if you when you start out with sin, but also it's one of the most um what is it, um, um ameliorating um concepts in this course is that you actually can get in touch with that energy of just love 
And it's, you know, that's the whole idea of, of God and um, how that makes more sense than the sin. Yep. In, you know, in, in the psychology of the horse, that's what it is to me. Like the, the way they talk about it and then the way it proves out when you try it is really what it um, shows and what, how we know that's true. And the concept from the course is you don't have to do anything special. You don't have to be anything special to deserve the love of God. You are the love of God. And all the rest of it that superimposes over that story is the made up story that we have believed since the Big Bang. But it's not true. And that's why we're asked to let go of the story, whatever the story is, and ask him to replace my story with his story. And his story is your love. You've always been loved and you will always be loved. There's nothing else here. But watch how we fight that. We don't accept that. Am I worthy of only love? And to the degree that I play in this sandbox, the answer is no, I don't believe I'm only love and I only deserve God's love. So you're not projecting the love. You're Perfect. Yes. You're yes. Yes. All the stuff that you see. What you think you will. Correct. Is what you're projecting. What you see on the outside, letting your eyes tell you, like I guess you know, with that woman with, with her, her dogs and what occurred in my life at that time, and to know that now I don't have any. I still I have a relationship to her. I'm not, even though I had a run in the house and was like, mm -hmm. you got to get away from this. It's driving me crazy. I got to a place where, and I praise God, where I realized that I wanted to put it all in her. It was all her fault yeah. that I was having a bad day. Right. <laughs> but I think that, you know, the important thing with this is that you said I, I had to run in the house. Well, we got to do in this moment what I have to do that's right for me. Then you can kind of re re um focus the process of what's going on and then it'll bring you to a settled place where you're ready to open to a new possibility right. it, took several months to do that. it can take several I, lifetimes I, I, I hear, I hear dogs barking and howling or whatever and i was like say oh shit you know i'd be in my bed i'd hear and i'd go oh it's her again and then i said that's not helping that isn't working and you're gonna listen you know okay yep. I'm, i don't i don't want it to be that way i don't want to be mad at her i don't want her to right. because you know people do that they move sure they oh gosh yes they go that woman across the street she's a real pain and she, yep you know and so i really had to sit with that right and i saw that it was interesting to me how i saw how it was my perception and how she just didn't have a clue and she would never hurt me. And right. It was just like that. All of us came, you know, it took that long, but I am yeah. on good terms with her. And I, you know, love it. Right. And again, it's not about changing the situation on the outside. It's changing the mind. Then the guilt and the fear and the sin goes down. And then I can be more present in the world with whatever relationships that I have. The change in perception. The change in perception. I mean, your very first experience in this human condition is when I escaped from the womb, I got a crack on the grill. Great start. And then you had to depend on somebody. What you expect? Then you had to depend on an ego to take care of you that didn't know how to. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, the setup was amazing. You know, I marvel at the setup of the ego aspect of us. We're literally born into a world where we can't survive on our own. And none of the parents that any one of us had could possibly give us all that we think we should have gotten from our parents. It's a setup. Well, and we parents continue and to expect that from everyone, yes, everyone, yes, 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 throughout our entire life. Right. The whole time turning against God, which everyone is a reflection of my relationship with God. So literally everyone is in opposition to who I am. So it's a, this is amazing setup until you start to realize what's behind it. And then the shift can begin to happen. It's like the perfect storm. Oh my God! It, it's 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 well. The course even says it's it's um what was it? Is but it's not God proof. Yeah. What's the it's first? Full proof. Oh, it's foolproof. That's it. Yeah, foolproof, but not God proof. And oh my gosh, unbelievable! Yes, and so many things to dig through. You know, instead of oh, I help. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's about shifting your interpretation from sin, which is always a projection of your own belief in sin, to a mistake that has to be corrected, which is our own as well as the <laughs> other person's. Okay, again, this is a two-way trip because I projected, when we chose for the ego, we projected both of these characters, not just this character. So if this character is being mean to me, guess what? It came from my story. And it's a story of duality. So I needed to have a dualistic character um, presentation. So while well, it turned from her sin with her dog to my sin in the house, it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. How? Why did I have to run in the house if it was all her fault? <laughs> it was her in home or something. You know, it, it, I see that. Like it's both of us. I, I took it out on both of us. Well, you wrote the story, so ask yourself. Yep. Yeah. The shift from sin to mistake is life changing. Oh, I mean, it's like the whole world turned upside down. Yes, right. yes. Yep. All right. So, sin are punished by the ego, mistakes are corrected by the Holy Spirit, and then they are undone. What more could we ask for, guys? This is like, wow. But in this process as well, this is not only about not letting or about keeping your brother on the hook you have to be willing to let yourself off the hook as well if you got this intellectually but you can't play it out in the world 24 hours a day that's the way it is right now you're in 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 practice and just like learning how to ride a bike or drive a car you didn't do it right the first time you kept with it and now you can drive here and you don't even remember driving here most of the time and that's how this choice with a little willingness each time will take you to a place where this is the automatic and I'm not run by insanity any longer. Pretty good gift, I think. A better analogy maybe is like a 90 year old out of shape trying to snowboard down a black diamond. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah what we're really feels like, like we're going know, through yeah. Take a couple weeks or yeah oh no a couple of weeks yeah i wish right yeah you know so but look how when you're a child or a kid yeah. for me i i couldn't wait to ride a bike like i don't know if that's true to me i could it was to see someone else ride a bike was just like i gotta ride a bike and then i had to ride a bike so i guess that i could get the outside of that or freaking bike that i could get more excited mm -hmm. about god helping me amen yeah, it's fine. It's yep. you know, the bike and at roller skates, all those things as a child that you love to do. I don't have like now. I you know I have a friend who learned to knit when she was sixty and all that. I'm not interested in that stuff. But mm -hmm. you know, at that time, he was so interested in all those little things, and now I'm interested in how I stop doing all that and get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you gotta want that more than anything else. And yeah. If you really are serious about it, anyways. It's going to be, it's, you know, a lot more fun than um, riding a bike, I guess. Also. Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> miracle number 27. A miracle is a universal blessing from God through me to all my brothers. It is the privilege of the forgiven to forgive. So the miracle is a universal blessing from God through me, okay, very important. It's not of me, it's through me and to all my brothers. And, you know, Ken used to describe it, which I always thought was kind of cute. He said, when you're coming from love, you could be standing up in front of the room, reading the names of a telephone book and you love would, ex you know, just come from you. And it's like, you become the, the lighthouse. The lighthouse doesn't say, oh, I think I'll turn this one red and yellow and, and green. It's like, I just emit light. That's what I am because I have chosen to connect with that light and that's all that can come from me. And it's not, oh, how do I, what do I say? How do I do? Eventually it will just be an emittance of love and light because that was, that's your complete identification. Um, and it is a privilege of the forgiven to forgive. When I'm at that place, I will automatically forgive, which then we literally become the demonstration of Jesus in the world. Okay. And, you know, we're, we're always trying to put words to that. But <laughs> that's not even necessary. 
So this is the first time in the person, excuse me, this is the first time the person of Jesus appears in the miracles. The miracle has its source in God and is expressed through Jesus because uh, we think of Jesus more as a, as a body, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Jesus being the manifestation of the Holy Spirit thus brings the love of God through us to other people bridging the gap between ourselves and God. So when we ask to see it through the lens of the Holy Spirit, we're literally connecting with that truth in our mind, which then reflects into the world, doesn't project, it reflects. Projection on this side, reflection on this side. And notice that when it's projection, it's always gonna be a projection of some form of guilt, sin, and fear, because that's what's in the, the film. And if you think of the film projector in the movie theater, there's a light and then there's a film. Okay, the film is gonna project on the screen. There's nothing on the screen, but that's where we keep looking. So what we need to do is go back to the projector, take out the film and let the light do what the light does. All right, and that is what the miracle does. And as we forgive, we are forgiven, which really means God's love. So when I remove any barriers to that love, I automatically experience that love and I automatically radiate that love as well. The more we accept forgiveness, the more we want to forgive other people, because when we do this, it becomes like, wow, that was pretty cool. I like the effects of this instead of the guilt, sin, and fear. But the trick is, I can't decide what it's going to look like. And I can't decide how it's going to the outcome, because then I'm playing in charge instead of get out of the way. And it, it can be very sneaky. Or even if you've asked for healing and something happens in the world, and you go, oh, I like that. I want more of that. But we forget what it was that caused the shift to occur. And then we focused on the effect instead of the cause. Uh, yeah, go ahead. When I was studying with Bob Morris, mm -hmm. we did this big forgiveness thing. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and you know, it's difficult to grasp the concept when you learn more about the course. That actually what it is that I'm asking myself to do is to forgive an illusion. Absolutely. A thing that does not well, exist. Atoning so forgive right. the illusion for, and forgive myself for dreaming the illusion and release it to the Holy Spirit. Right. And wake up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Atoning means undoing, which is another word for correction. It has nothing to do with the other guy. Right. The other situation or person or whatever is going to trigger the memory that something's going on up here and it hasn't been let go of. So we do use that. Don't, don't deny the body. Don't deny the situations that come in your life. They are your gift. The only way we know down here what's in the film is by what we see on the screen. But don't stop there. Don't stay on the screen. You have to go back to the cause, which is the film that's being placed in front of the light that's being the reflection or projection on the screen. It's not Paul Newman's fault. It's not Paul Newman's fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's easy to get, you know, stuck in the stuff. Because it's all so real. It's so solid. It's so, yeah. I woke up this morning and I was having a good day. And then somebody said something to me or stuck their tongue out at me. And now it's got to be you. I was fine. But not so, because that's a projection from my mind. Because if my mind was aligned with truth and love, all I could ever see experience is love or a call for love. And if anything else gets danced in there, it's because I'm not allowed, allowed, aligned with that love. <laughs> if you want to practice forgiveness, get behind the wheel of an automobile. <laughs> it's everywhere. I mean, you know, pick one, anyone. You know, there, there's just myriads of possibilities, and and one that could really irritate you might not irritate somebody else, but something else on this chart is going to eat you alive. Mm -hmm. I had that car mm -hmm. and I left my cottage. It's 450 miles, eight hour drive. And I said to myself when I left, 
that I am going to practice forgiveness. <laughs> so I it up and by the time, I mean, I got about an hour away. Oh, that was pretty good. I, I must have, it must have been like 500 times. Yes. Yeah. You're an idiot. Why didn't you, what are you in this land yeah. for? Why did you not put on your blink? I mean, it's, it's a connotation. It's a connotation. It, and it's all kill or be killed. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And what Jesus is asking us right now is to observe and see how insane we really are because we thought we were these loving little creatures. And instead, bam, bam, bam. Okay. <laughs> we, kill we kill with our thoughts 24 hours a day. I'm mad to get at people cutting in front of me and then tell me I'm sure when the pokey one in front of me was a demon. Uh, I know, it doesn't matter which side. That, those two, like, two ideas and driving are opposite, but. I, I told this story before, but there's this minivan in the park, and it's halfway on the road and halfway off the curb. First off, I'm critical of the guy because he's driving the minivan, because I wouldn't drive a minivan. Right. So now all of a sudden, this guy's an asshole because he's in a minivan. Right. Right. He's out there, and he's waving his arms, so now I attack the guy after I get done with the minivan. Okay. I get on the other side, the front of the minivan, and he's protecting a turtle going across the road. And all of a sudden, this guy became the most wonderful human being that I ever experienced in my entire life. Wow. Beautiful. And, and, yes. And the, and the lesson for me is I was wrong. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You didn't know. Yeah. You know, and it, not not in a condemning way. No, yeah. no, it's no. It's like right. God, I was wrong. Yes, yes. Yeah, then I yeah. Did I and, have to? Yeah. And actually, you know, I got on the other, and I did just laugh at myself. Beautiful, beautiful. And literally, if I'm looking through my little pea-sized viewpoint and you're looking through yours, then we're not looking at the same thing. And then every when we ask for healing, we're literally saying, I want to see more of the everything so I have a better view of what's really going on here. And you got to see that. That's way cool. And when you have a moment like that, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing this 24 hours a day. I am the creator of the world that I see. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Mary. No, no, I, that, that's a great story. And it's so right on because that's how we are all the time. So then the next time that you experience that, I mean, this is what you said about how when, when you go to the Holy Spirit and you can't get any deeper and you, you know, get there, that you take in. You cut off parts of the rest of it, but you're not so immersed right. in your little story. So yep. next time you see a, a guy on the whatever he's doing, you're like, go, hmm. oh, well, maybe it's a turtle. I like, yep. don't so know. And actually, your your own your own sense of having to jump in is lessened completely. Exactly. That was your experience. So that's like a that's like a, a cause and effect right there. Absolutely. Like the, how the lesson, how the course yep. works. Yes, yeah, so it's but like your view with different eyes. Yeah. I don't know what this means. Right, right. Show me right. how to look at it. Exactly, exactly. You're not going to jump into your own. Right. <laughs> but, but a little bit of, of Bert's mind has shifted yeah. because yeah. of that experience. That was, yeah. that was a healing experience. Yeah. All right. So always remember that Jesus does the miracle, not us. Mm -hmm. We have to get out of the way. Nothing in my capacity could ever bring the answer. Zero. Nothing. No story. Nothing. Our job is only to clear our minds of what would interfere so that he can extend his love through us. And I have to be aware there's a block there. And how do I know there's a block there? I'm not at peace. Because if I'm not at peace, it means I've chosen against love. And this is the effects of that choice. And if I'm serious about wanting to know what love is, and you know, in your situation, Bert, you did put out there that you wanted to work on this. Your, your mind was open to that possibility. Didn't come through exactly the way you thought it was going to, but it definitely uh, reflected to you a, a total shift in mind, which is which is wonderful. And you will never, ever, ever forget that story, ever. Yeah. Who needs a memoir if you have a whole There you go.
All right, it's that time. So everybody take a nice big deep breath and we'll say our prayer. Forgive us our illusions, Father, and help us to accept our true relationship with you in which there are no illusions and where none can ever enter. Our holiness is yours. What can there be in us that needs forgiveness when yours is perfect? The sleep of forgetfulness is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love. Let us not wander into temptation, for the temptation of the Son of God is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given and accept with this into the minds that you created and which you love. Amen. All right, so spend some time observing, paying attention, see what's going on. <laughs> yep. All right. See you next week.